So continuing our videos on Marvel's What If series with Doctor Strange right around the corner, what I wanted to do here is dip my toe in the water and have a discussion about what would have happened if Doctor Doom became Doctor Strange. Now, a couple things to bear in mind here. For those of you guys who are new to Marvel Comics and new to my channel, the What If line of stories are publications designed to offer us alternate reality depictions of events. That is to say, you know, in this instance, Doctor Doom becoming Doctor Strange instead of Stephen Strange. In addition to this, this story was written by Dan Slott. And so like all Dan Slott stories, it makes sense in the beginning and then it goes off the rails about halfway through. And I don't know what was going on with Dan Slott when he wrote this, if he was just relatively new, I feel like he was, but he went completely off the reservation about halfway through this story. But what we do here is we pick up with Dr. Doom encountering the Ancient One for the very first time. Now, this is this is actually really kind of cool because this ties directly into the history of Dr. Doom. And what I mean is, for those of you guys who have seen my series on the Books of Doom, we talked about his, his life as a child, that he had uh, witnessed his mother's murder, that he had witnessed his father's murder, that he had basically gone to uh, North America because of his vast intelligence. He was inducted into uh, New York State University where he met Reed Richards, but his mother's soul had been captured by Mephisto due to the fact that she had invoked a pack with the Prince of Lies, I guess, or with the demon for the purpose of granting her the abilities related to black magic. And the result of this was that her soul was doomed forever to remain in the clutches of Mephisto. And Dr. Doom himself had basically spent as much of his life as he could trying to find ways to free his mother's soul. Now, after creating a teleporter that allowed him to travel to the nether realm in an attempt to save his mother's life, in the process, uh, he had basically destroyed his face. And the result was that in an attempt to pursue a cure for this, as well as gain the power necessary to free his mother's soul, instead of traveling to the Himalayas and stumbling upon a temple of monks, he instead had traveled to Tibet and he had stumbled upon the temple of the Ancient One with regards to the original Sorcerer Supreme. And so because of this, when the Ancient One had basically asked Dr. Doom what he, what it was that he was there for, the Ancient One also purged, or I guess uh, scanned the mind and the heart and soul of Dr. Doom and discovered that he was basically looking for power, that he wasn't really looking to make the world a better place. He wasn't really looking to operate outside of himself in terms of being altruistic. Instead, he just wanted to amass power. And the result was that the Ancient One was actually actually pretty hesitant to help Dr. Doom, but the Ancient One also realized that there was a flicker of, you know, greatness in Victor Von Doom. And the Ancient One believed that he could turn that flicker into a full-on flame and make Dr. Doom somebody spectacular. So what happened was he basically took Victor under his wing and began teaching him everything he knew. The problem with this was that for Baron Mordo, uh, the, you know, at, at that point in time, the protege of the Ancient One, he viewed Dr. Doom as a threat simply because of the fact that Doom was able to learn in days what it took Baron Mordo to learn in weeks and months. And so because of this, Victor is wildly more powerful than Baron Mordo. Now, much like the uh, you know main Marvel timeline where Stephen Strange and Baron Mordo had formed a rivalry of sorts, Baron Mordo also tries to attack Victor Von Doom. But what happens is that when he sees his face, he actually discovers that it is a Doom bot. Now, Dan Slott does not square this circle. You know, for those of you guys who don't know, Victor Von Doom did not start creating Doom bots uh, really until after after he became Victor Von Doom, or at least Doombots as we knew them, when he was at you know, New York State University. And what I mean here is that while Doctor Doom was creating Doombots while he was at uh, Empire State University, the issue is that we're not told how this Doombot got here. We're not told how it managed to make its way in here with no one knowing. Maybe he teleported it, whatever the case may be, but the fact remains that this Doombot also housed within it a small tube. And within this tube is a uh, basically a bomb on the subatomic scale that Doctor Doom plants in the brain of Baron Mordo, basically stating that if Baron Mordo kills Dr. Doom, or if Dr. Doom uh, feels as though he's being betrayed, he can activate the device and it'll kill Baron Mordo. And so one of the interesting things about this is the Ancient One initially appears to Victor Von Doom after he makes this threat and doesn't realize that Victor Von Doom was telling the truth. Instead, the Ancient One thinks he's bluffing. The Ancient One thinks that he's basically lying. And so what happens is shortly after this, Dr. Doom comes to the realization that the Ancient One could easily be toppled because, you know, this, this guy does not realize the advancement of technology in relation to what Doom is capable of. Now, following this particular plan that Doom begins to lay in motion, we ultimately pick up with the 
arrival of Stephen Strange. Now, the arrival of Stephen Strange happens exactly the way it did in Marvel Comics, and this is interesting because Victor Von Doom, his timeline started before Stephen Strange. That is to say, Doom was at school with Reed Richards. Doom experienced uh, his face being scarred before Stephen Strange experienced his car wreck, which resulted in him traveling to uh, the Temple of the Ancient One and looking for a cure, you know, to basically restore his ability to use his hands and become a surgeon again. But because of the fact that Doom is a student of the Ancient One, when Stephen Strange arrives here, he's basically met with Victor Von Doom. And when Stephen Strange says that his whole purpose for being here is to find a cure so that he can continue to use his hands and to be a neurosurgeon, instead <laughs> instead of allowing him to become a part of the uh, of the mystic arts, Victor Von Doom actually removes, man, this is messed up. He removes his hands and replaces them with robotic hands, basically allowing Stephen Strange to go forward, <laughs> able to engage in the kind of surgery that he's used to with better precision than he was able able to do <laughs> with uh, with his normal hands. That's messed up. I'm just gonna throw it out there. That's that's kind of messed up. It's funny. <laughs> it's funny to me. I don't know why, but that's <laughs> that's kind of messed up. But the fact remains here that <laughs> because the Ancient One realizes that Doctor Doom didn't help Stephen Strange when he could have, the Ancient One comes to the conclusion that Doom is not the protege he was looking for. And so the idea of the Ancient One is to basically shoo Doctor Doom out of there as fast as possible <laughs> to more or less help him rescue his mother's soul and then get him away from the temple as fast as he can. And so what happens is the Ancient One... <laughs> <laughs> I love this. The Ancient One presents uh, Doctor Doom with the Eye of Agamotto and the Cloak of Levitation, but, but when he meets him, when Doctor Doom has his ironclad suit on, the Ancient One just kind of freaks out. He's totally surprised by what he sees because it's crazy, and, and it is. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I love Dr. Doom. You know, he's like, it is I. <laughs> like, it is, uh, I, I, I don't know why that's funny to me, but it is. But the fact remains that Dr. Doom and uh, the Ancient One travel to the Nether Realm in order to confront Mephisto. Now, because of the fact that Dr. Doom has the abilities of the Sorcerer Supreme, uh, he's wildly powerful, but he's not as powerful as Mephisto. Something to keep in mind here is that in Marvel Comics, Mephisto is, for all intents and purposes, a cosmic entity. I mean, he's an elder god but he's largely considered to be a cosmic entity because he's so powerful. He literally uses the energies of the souls that belong to people that he's tricked to power himself. And the reason for this is that it keeps him at his at his absolute peak in terms of his abilities when he's in the nether realm. Now, when he leaves the nether realm, he becomes weaker the longer he stays away. But the fact remains here that when Dr. Doom arrives alongside the Ancient One, uh, he immediately sees that his mother is still being held captive and races off to help her. And because of this, Mephisto Mephisto sees the two of them as being stronger together than they are apart, and as a result of their separation, he turns his sights to the Ancient One. Now, what follows is really just a mishmash of insanity of the highest level. Um, this is this is probably some of the craziest writing that I've ever seen in my life, and I have no idea where Dan Slott went with this. So, what happens here is the Ancient One initially is able to take on the forces of Mephisto, but the issue is that Mephisto, because of his extreme power, is able to overcome the Ancient One and actually kills him. And because of this, the demon lord Dormammu sees this as a chance to begin his invasion of Earth due to the fact that Dormammu was always held at bay by the power of the Ancient One. Now, when it comes to Dormammu, something to bear in mind here is that Stephen Strange himself has admitted that if Dormammu were to rise to full power and invade the planet Earth, there'd probably be nothing anybody could do to stop him just because Dormammu is so wildly powerful. Um, I feel like he's a character we need to have a discussion on at some point closer to the release of Doctor Strange just because I really hope the movie has a... Tra has a uh, a nod to him or a tease to him because uh, Dormammu is, <laughs> he is a villain of the highest order. I mean, he's, He's well, he's he's wildly powerful. He's well beyond Galactus, some of the cosmic entities. It's, it's insane how powerful he is. But the fact remains that the Ancient One, after having been killed, so to speak, by Mephisto, reemerges as, I guess, in his spirit form. And because of he, because he's in his spirit form, he's, his power is at his peak, but he can't really interact directly with Mephisto. Instead, he basically uses his power to move on to the afterlife while simultaneously rescuing the soul of Doctor Doom's mother, uh, thereby allowing Doctor Doom himself to step into the the realm of being the Ancient One. And so because of this, he basically leaves Mephisto behind in the Nether Realm, travels back to the planet Earth, only to find that Dormammu has begun the process of invading the planet Earth. And so what happens is Doctor Doom travels 
God in heaven, Dan Slot. Doctor Doom travels to meet the Fantastic Four. Now again, this is, this all kind of coincides, right, with the current timeline of Doctor Doom in Marvel Comics during this point in his publication history anyway. It's just things are happening differently. And so instead of encountering the Fantastic Four after he became Doctor Doom and took over Latveria, instead he's re-encountering the Fantastic Four after having become the Sorcerer Supreme. In addition to this, Dan Slott actually does a pretty good job maintaining the, uh, the essence of who the Fantastic Four are in the sense that, of course, Dr. Doom shows up and says that he could just wipe them all out if he wanted to. Um, but the issue is he needs Reed Richards' help because Reed Richards is the second smartest person, according to Dr. Doom. And the idea is that he needs an artifact of this that's long since been lost in order to successfully defeat uh, Dormammu. And so what he does is he teleports the Fantastic Four into the past and <laughs> has them disguised as pirates. And the idea is to have the Fantastic Four board a ship that currently houses the Obsidian Stone of Merlin, which can be used to defeat Dormammu. That is the idea that Dan Slott came up with. And people wonder why Spider-Man is being written so bad at the moment. But the fact remains here that Doctor Doom and the Fantastic Four are successfully able to work together in the sense that the Fantastic Four are able to grasp the, uh, the Obsidian Stone, which is specially attuned for magical properties, which can, which of course, you know, Doctor Doom can in turn enhance and then take on the forces of Dormammu, which he's successfully able to do. And the result of this is that Dormammu is effectively cast back into the Dark Dimension and uh, Earth is freed of his control. The problem with this is that, uh, you know, Doctor Doom seems to succumb to the power of the Obsidian Stone in the sense that it drains the souls of its wielder. And the result of this is that Doctor Doom seems to be dead or on the verge of dying. Now, while he is taken over to Stephen Strange for the purpose of Strange using his, uh, his his surgical skills in order to try to save the life of Victor Von Doom, it doesn't seem as if it's possible and it seems as if Victor Von Doom is dying. But what happens is Doom says that he had planned for this. And the reason why was that when he first encountered Stephen Strange, he sensed that Strange had the potential for incredible magical abilities. And so what he did is he created a safeguard. He created a machine that would allow him to continue his legacy. And what he does is he basically has the mind of Stephen Strange removed, or at least has his memories removed and overridden with the memories of Victor Von Doom, basically allowing Doom to switch bodies between who he was and the body of Stephen Strange. Uh, I don't know if that makes any sense to you guys. Um, I'll be honest, man, this story's batshit crazy. <laughs> this story's insane. Uh, this is, wow. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's fun, you know, it's fun. It's a fun, you know, it's a story I enjoyed. Uh, it is just, it's a, it's a what if story. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Anyway, guys, if you guys are new here to Comics Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button and, uh, you know, make sure you guys become part of the Rob Corps. Make sure you guys drop a like if you enjoyed this video and uh, leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. Um, was Dan Slott on something when he wrote this story? But yeah, so <laughs> with that being said, we're going to bring this video to an end. Good God. And I will catch you all later. Peace.